It's Ollie from History Profiles. In this video, I will be taking you to the Bronze Age, to the time of the most epic conflict in all of history, the Trojan War. This war would immortalize many kings and warriors. In this mythical age of heroes, men were so skilled with the sword that their comrades thought they must have been gods. Anyway, Let's get into the video. Memnon would have been born in around 1200 or 1300 BC, somewhere around that time. Even the circumstances of his birth are legendary. Memnon's father was a prince of Troy named Tithonus. One day, the goddess of the dawn, Eos, snatched Tithonus away and he was taken to the ends of the earth, known as the Oceanus in Greek mythology. Or, perhaps the Prince of Troy was an ancient traveller, and since much of the map was blank due to the world not being discovered, this prince would search for distant lands. The goddess Eos would give birth to Memnon, half man, half god. He would soon rise up, to become the king of the Ethiopians. This was an area south of Egypt, which didn't just encompass modern Ethiopia, but what also is now northern Sudan. Being blessed in the art of combat, his skill with the sword would be compared to the greatest warriors of all time, such as Heracles and Achilles. Memnon ruled a vast kingdom and commanded a huge army. Not much is known about the life of this warrior, as many poems regarding his life have been lost to time. Memnon would also conquer great kingdoms to the east. He is also described as a handsome man, and at some point married a Trojan queen. Now, I must take you to the climax of the Trojan War, in the tenth year of the war. Achilles, the champion of the Greeks, and Hector, the champion of Troy, would engage in a 1v1 duel. This duel resulted in the death of Hector. The city of Troy was now without a military leader and was left weak. Priam, the king of Troy, pleaded with the gods to help him in his darkest hour. The gods heard his pleas and told Memnon to leave Ethiopia and march to the aid of Troy. Memnon, being a son of a prince of Troy, and having married a queen of Troy, probably kept in close contact with them. Since the war was raging for ten long years between the Greeks and the Trojans, word would have gotten to Memnon in Ethiopia. Memnon would gather his men and march towards the city of Troy. He arrived with men that had a terrifying warlike appearance, and there were so many of them that the city could not accommodate them all, and many of the men had to camp outside the city walls. Memnon arrived into the city after an argument where the rulers of Troy debated if he would show up at all. The army was described as being too big to count, and on his arrival, Priam hosted a huge banquet in his honour. Memnon and Priam would exchange glorious war stories all night of past triumphs. Memnon's tales led to Priam to declare that he would no doubt be the saviour of Troy and annihilate the Greeks. However, Memnon was a very humble man and didn't boast at the banquet as he thought that would be unwise. It is said that the gods favoured Memnon and so great was their love for him that Zeus ordered all other Olympians to stand down and not interfere in the battles ahead, as Zeus wanted to see Memnon's fighting ability. The day after the banquet, both armies would face off against each other, the Greeks on one side and the Trojans and Ethiopians on the other. Memnon and his army attacked the Greeks and a fierce battle would ensue. The king of Ethiopia was described as riding a chariot and killing all that were in his path. At some point, Memnon would leave his chariot 
and fight head on with the Greeks until he encountered a fearsome foe, that being Antichalus. Antichalus was the son of Nestor, the king of Pylos, and the prince was known as a savage warrior. The two warriors clashed, but Memnon would kill Antichalus, a great hero of Greece had just been vanquished. After the death of Antichalus, the tide turned in the battle, and the Greeks were driven back to their ships in a panic. They were on the verge of defeat. Nestor, the father of Antichalus, challenged Memnon to a fight as the battle raged on. But Memnon said it wouldn't be just to fight such an old man, and refused. This conveys Memnon's warrior values. He kills when he must, to an opponent he sees as worthy, but will not kill for the sake of it. The Greek army were now about to be pushed into the sea by the Trojans and Ethiopians, and Nestor, still full of grief and rage due to the death of his son, managed to find Achilles on the battlefield. Nestor would tell Achilles to avenge the death of his son, who was also a close friend to Achilles, and he agreed. Achilles then found Memnon on the battlefield and challenged him to a fight in single combat. Memnon had heard of the great warrior Achilles and agreed to the fight. The two heroes were evenly matched, both favoured by the gods and were also rumoured to be demigods. The Olympians agreed to help neither of them and would watch the fight with their full attention as a fight of such skill and speed would never be seen on earth again. The battle drew to a halt and men gathered around the two champions to see them clash in what would be the greatest duel in antiquity. It is said that Zeus projected the two men into giants so that all the men on the battlefield and the Olympians in the sky had a full view of this epic battle. The two demigods then clashed and their speed and skill would leave both gods and men in awe as their movements seemed to be impossible to recreate. Memnon and Achilles would fight for a long time. The invincible Achilles would bleed due to Memnon's swift attacks. He had done the impossible, though he didn't manage to land a killing blow. However, Achilles managed to get the better of Memnon and managed to thrust his spear through the shield of Memnon and pierce his body. This then left him open for an attack and Achilles thrust his sword into Memnon's heart. The king of Ethiopia, the demigod and champion of Troy lay dead on the battlefield. This then caused his entire army to flee in terror. Achilles and the Greeks had such respect for Memnon that they prepared a funeral pyre for him, but some of Memnon's men had stayed to collect the body of their leader, and they buried him and he was laid to rest in a tomb. Zeus, the king of the gods, then made Memnon immortal, and there is much debate whether this meant that his name was immortalised, if he was brought back from the dead, or if he was mummified where his body would have been preserved. There is also speculation that as well as him being the king of Ethiopia, that he was the pharaoh of Egypt as well. Therefore, if this is true, his men may have stayed in Troy to mummify their dead king. There should be a lot more information on this legendary warrior. However, the poems and literature about his early life and the poem of his death have been lost to time and we only have fragments of the work. I believe that this information was lost in the burning of the Library of Alexandria, which was the greatest library of the ancient world, and possibly the greatest library to ever exist. As Memnon played a crucial role in the Trojan War, I thought I'd do a video on him, as in the film Troy, they left this man out of the story even though he was one of the men who the gods favoured most, and could even match Achilles with his mastery of combat. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, 
make sure to like, subscribe and share, and have a great day. Bye.